Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, we are going to make shepherd's pie. Well, actually, we're gonna make cottage pie, but more on that in a minute. Let's get this pressure cooker started up. So we have our Ninja Foodie, and I'm gonna lift the air crisp lid. I have two pounds of potatoes that I have just chunked up, and three cups of beef broth. And actually, I have one cup of beef broth and two cups of chicken stock. Because before I do a video, I have to test these recipes several times. And I realized that I ran out of beef stock or beef broth. So I had to improvise. And I encourage you to do that in your kitchen as well. So just because you don't have enough of something, there's usually a substitute. And if you ever run into a bind, just send me a message. I'm happy to help you out. So I have the two pounds of potatoes and three cups of beef and chicken stock. We're gonna put this into the inner pot of the Ninja Foodie. Now you could also put in just two cups of the broth. You don't have to put all three. It's gonna take a little bit longer for it to come up to pressure because I have three cups and not two. The reason I did that is because I had pre-diced, you know, pre-chunked up my potatoes and I didn't want them to be exposed to air because potatoes when exposed to air turn brown and they look terrible and we don't want brown mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna put them in like that, so that's why I had them in the liquid. There's arrows here that you line up in case you ever have trouble like I do 50% of the time, even though I know this. Um, there's arrows, line them up and then just give it a turn. We're gonna go under pressure, so we wanna make sure that this knob on the back, the black valve is to the seal position. Turn the Ninja Foodi on, hit your pressure, high pressure is fine, and we're gonna go for 10 minutes. Then we just hit start. We're gonna wait for it to come up to pressure, which is probably gonna take about eight minutes because I have three cups of liquid in here. So it's gonna take a little bit longer than if you just added two. Reserve the third in case you need to thicken the stock later. The reason why I'm putting in beef broth and chicken stock, chicken broth, um, instead of water is because I'm gonna use the beef stock as a thickening agent when we make our sauce for this shepherd's cottage pie. Um, so I wanted the starch to come out of the potatoes into that broth. It's gonna help thicken our sauce. So the reason why we're making shepherd's pie today is because I received an email from Joe and he asked me to create a recipe for shepherd's pie. I don't happen to really like shepherd's pie that much, but I, you know, I wanna do what you guys want me to do, so I'm happy to make any kind of recipe suggestions as long as I can find the ingredients. But I emailed him back and I just said, do you mind if I do it with ground beef instead of ground lamb? And he said, no, absolutely, he prefers ground beef. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity for me to try to duplicate a shepherd's pie that Jeff and I had in Dahlonega, Georgia, when we went on a trip. We went into this little pub called Shenanigans and uh, we listened to some great music and I had the best shepherd's pie. Well, now I know it's called cottage pie, but I'll get to that in just a second. So the shepherd's pie, it was so flavorful and had this rich sauce with it and it was pretty simple. I thought, now's the time I can duplicate that. And guess what? I did, I nailed it. I'm so excited. You're gonna love this recipe. But we do need to call it cottage pie because it can only be called shepherd's pie if it's made with lamb. So when we make it with beef, we call it cottage pie. Okay, we're gonna let this come to pressure. It's gonna go under pressure for 10 minutes and then we'll be back and this dish is gonna come together so fast. Okay, so we finished our 10 minutes of pressure cooking and I immediately released the pressure. The red button is now down and I can open up the lid open it up away from you so you don't get a, a little steam bath there and set that lid over there so now what I'm gonna do is put the potatoes I'm gonna strain out the liquid because I'm using the liquid for the sauce the potatoes obviously are for our luscious mashed potatoes that we're gonna make okay all right so I'm gonna lift this hot pot up Try to get a hold of it there we go okay so I'm just gonna pour this through. Be careful when you're doing this because this is the steam is really hot. Now there are a little bit of mashed potatoes, well, cooked potatoes in the bottom. Not gonna worry about it. It's not a big deal. You don't need to do anything with that. Now, 
I'm gonna do a little, a couple little transfers here just because this bowl wasn't quite steady enough for this uh, colander. So I'm, but I do wanna use this as my um, mashing bowl. So I'm just gonna switch this over into here. There. Okay. Now we'll reserve that for later. And as far as our mashed potatoes go, what I like to do right when they come out and they're steaming there is I like to just kind of break them up a little bit. What this does is help release the steam before we completely mash them. And by releasing the steam, we're gonna get a less starchy, gummy potato at the end, and that's what we want. So just gonna release that steam and just sit them to the side. They can sit like this um, for quite some time. I mean, they are super hot. So let's get the rest of our dinner going. So I'm gonna set the Ninja Foodi to the sear saute on high, hit start, and I'm adding in three ounces of just diced up bacon. Now this step is optional, but I found that it really, really added a ton of flavor to the sauce. Um, so I'm gonna get that in to start to render the fat out of there. We'll also put in our one cup of onions, which is about a half of a cup diced. I use the dahlia or sweet onion, but you could use a regular yellow onion or even a red onion, anything is fine. We'll just let this heat up a little bit. The fat from the bacon is going to render out and create uh, the sauteing grease oil that we need um, for the onion, so we don't need to add any olive oil or anything. Oh, I can already smell the bacon. This is applewood smoked bacon, but you could use any kind. This is also thick cut bacon, but you could use thin cut as well. Any, anything will work. Or skip it all together. If you skip it all together, just add in your ground beef and then saute your ground beef and your onions together. We're gonna add in the ground beef in just a minute anyway. Okay, that looks like it's moving right along. So I have one and a half pounds of 80-20 ground beef here. You could use 90-10, 97-3, you could use ground turkey. The first time I made this, I actually used ground turkey. It was delicious, I couldn't even tell the difference. So we're gonna add this in, and then break it up with our handy little mix and chop here. I love this thing. You've probably seen me use it on a lot of the videos. And I'll link to it down below as well in case you want to get one. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add in our seasoning blend. And this is kind of important. Usually I just say, you know, add in whatever you want. But I think that this, this seasoning blend is what really brings all these wonderful flavors together and just the end result is just so good. Um, so if you can, I would go ahead and give these seasonings a try. I have a half a teaspoon of dried rosemary leaves. It's not powder though, and that's important. It's dried rosemary leaves. I also have one teaspoon of dried thyme leaves. Now you could use fresh thyme, but if you use fresh thyme, use about a tablespoon. You need more of a fresh herb than you do a dry herb. And I have a half a teaspoon of just plain black pepper and one teaspoon of fine grind sea salt. And any kind of sea salt or kosher salt would work fine. And add those in. And just kind of continue to break up the meat until you get it into small pieces. Great, that is looking great. So it's probably about three quarters of the way done. Now we wanna add in our cup of carrots. This is about three medium-sized carrots that I sliced up. I tried to keep them on the thinner side because we do want these to cook rather quickly. You don't want crunchy carrots and then have the other vegetables be a little softer. You kinda of wanna keep those the same texture. That's why I'm adding them in right now with the ground beef. They're gonna take a little bit longer than the frozen peas and corn will take to cook. So here I have a tablespoon and a half of Worcestershire sauce, and we're gonna add that in just to give another depth of flavor. Now you can omit this if you don't have it or you don't like it, but I really do think it adds um, a, a layer of flavor that's important in the shepherd's pie. I'm sorry, cottage pie. We're making cottage pie. Mmm, it smells so good. Okay, 
So now we get to start to develop our sauce. So we have rendered out the fat in the bacon and we have rendered out the fat in the ground beef. Now we need something to bind with that fat and we're gonna use flour. We're making sort of a roux, however, a roux is technically done without the beef and the carrots in there, but that's kind of what we're doing. So I'm gonna sprinkle on about half of this. This is a half of a cup. So I'm gonna start off with a quarter of a cup and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top here. And then we're gonna continue to stir it around until the flour starts to bind with the fat. And it'll start to thicken up. You can kind of see it, it kind of adheres to the ground beef. You can kind of just, kind of just tell as you're, as you're looking at it. As long as you can see glistening, you have room to add more flour. Doesn't mean you always have to add flour until the glistening goes away, but you don't want to add flour once you don't see any glistening because there's no more fat to bind with the flour and you'll end up with kind of like a chalky and floury uh, sauce, which you don't want. But we still have plenty of glistening here, so I'm going to go ahead and add in the other half. So I used a half a cup of all-purpose flour. You want to stir this and cook this for about two minutes. What that is going to do is just kind of cook off any floury taste. And it gets real thick and that's fine. We're going to pour in our beef stock in just a minute. All right. I think we're ready. It's been cooking for just a minute. I can see some like of the brown flour and um, fat kind of on the bottom of the pan. That's fine because this is the liquid's going to take care of that. So again, this is uh, this is three cups of beef stock and chicken stock combined because that's what I had. You could use all beef stock or all chicken stock. I'm just going to move this around. I really want to get whatever's cooking on the bottom. That's called deglazing the pan. And that is where a lot of the flavor is. So we want to get that off and into our sauce. And I am adding probably about a cup, three quarters of a cup to a cup at a time. And you can see the broth and stuff is being absorbed by, by the flour fairly quickly. So there's a spot over here. I'm just going to I'm going to scrape this plastic mix and chop there to get that off and pour in some more liquid there. We just let this cook. I'm going to add in the frozen vegetables in a minute, but we're going to let it cook. Cook down just a little bit. It'll come a, become a really nice thick sauce. The other thing you could do is you could add a little bit of wine in here if you'd like, if you like that flavor. Good. Okay, let's get the rest in. And let's go ahead and get in our frozen vegetables. Now this is one cup of frozen corn and one cup of frozen peas. You could certainly use canned corn as well, just drain the liquid um, fairly well. All right, here we go. And this is where it just becomes so beautiful. When you see the orange and the green and the yellow from the corn, oh, it's just gorgeous. All right, so now we just want this to kind of saute. So I'm just gonna take the heat down just a little bit. Let's, let's go to medium, because I don't want this to turn into a rapid boil, and we've got a few other things we need to do. We've got to get the mashed potatoes mashed up, and we've got to get the cheese grated. So I'm going to lower this to medium and just let it simmer for a while. We can stir periodically. You can also give a taste now um, just to see how your flavorings are, if you need any extra salt or any extra pepper or anything like that. Now's a good time to get those in there. So before we get to mashing up our potatoes, I'm going to add in the secret ingredient here. And that is roasted garlic. Now I did this a little bit earlier today in the Ninja Foodie. It did not take any time at all and I have that recipe on my website under the spaghetti recipe and I'll link to that below. I love roasting garlic. I think it just imparts such a wonderful flavor into so many things and it's really super easy to deal with. However, if you don't want to do it, don't worry about it. 
Add about two or three cloves of garlic in the beginning when you're sauteing your onions and things will just be fine. But this really is the secret ingredient. Okay, all you have to do too is just push. And as you push, these little cloves will pop out. We are gonna put half in here and we're gonna put half in our potatoes. Okay, let's take this down to low. It's boiling just a little bit too much for my liking. Okay, so I have half of the garlic cloves in our mixture here, and then I also have the other half in our cream and butter. And now we're gonna get ready and mash up those potatoes. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in our quarter cup of butter and our quarter cup of cream into these still warm uh, mashed potatoes here. Well, they're not quite mashed yet, but they will be. I'm gonna add that in. Then I'm gonna do this by hand. Now you certainly can mash your potatoes with a hand mixer, it's no problem. You can even use a, 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 a stand mixer too. I know people that do that. Um, however, I kinda like the texture of hand mashed, and so that's what we're gonna do here. And it is pretty easy. Oh gosh, they, this, they smell so good. Like you're getting the aroma of the garlic and oh, it just smells so good. These are looking good. I mean, they are nice and creamy. They're looking great. Now, I already had a half a teaspoon of salt in the butter and cream mixture that we added before we mashed these up. But I'm gonna give it a little taste right now just to make sure I don't need to add any more. No, they're perfect. Now, ordinarily, if I was just serving these as a side, I would probably add a little more salt, but we're gonna be topping this with cheese, and so the cheese is gonna lend some more salt flavor, so I don't want it to get too salty. So I'm gonna leave these alone. They taste delicious. Now, I also wanna taste this meat mixture, just to make sure we don't need to season it anymore. Um, if you watch any of my videos, you're gonna know that I am a huge proponent of layering flavors. That means that every component of the dish needs to be seasoned in order for your food to taste very vibrant and delicious. So we're gonna make sure this has enough seasoning as well. I'm gonna get one carrot, a couple of peas, and a piece of corn there. Oops, my carrot fell. Uh, so that I can also tell if the texture is okay on the carrots. You know what? The carrots need to cook just a few more minutes. They're just a little on um, on the hard side and we don't want that in this shepherd's pie. Ordinarily, I like firm carrots. So what I'm gonna do is bump this up, but I'm gonna watch it very closely. I'm gonna bump up the heat. I turned it down to low earlier because it was just boiling too much. I'm gonna turn it up to medium and kind of let it come to another simmer and go maybe two more minutes. That's all we'll need to do. All right, so it's been a couple minutes. Let's just take a little taste here. Mm, much better. But you know, I think it need, does need a little salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another half a teaspoon of salt here. And that should be fine, I'll get that mixed in. And then we're gonna finish this up by air crisping the top layer of mashed potatoes and cheese. All right, let's go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodie off. That salt got stirred in nicely. And now we get to put our mashed potatoes on. There is no special way to put the mashed potatoes on. So I just sort of dollop them on. And while the mixture is hot, the mashed potatoes might melt in a little bit. If I was gonna put this in the oven, I would probably cool 
the um, mixture and then put it into whatever baking dish I was gonna use. Let it cool down some, then top it with the mashed potatoes and the cheese and bake it in the oven. But since we're gonna do this entirely in the Ninja Foodi, I want that sauce to be piping hot, so I don't wanna let it cool down. So I'm just gonna add on these mashed potatoes on top, just the best I can, I'm just kind of moving them around. And you don't wanna to push too much on them or they will just kind of disappear into your, into your hamburger mixture. I'm just kind of gently and then we're going to top this with cheese and put the air fry mode on to get that cheese nice and brown and bubbly okay so that looks that looks good now, the first time I made this, I thought, oh, that's not gonna be enough mashed potatoes. I should have made more. Trust me, it's plenty. It really was. It was absolutely the perfect amount. Of course, if you wanna add more, go ahead and add more. Now, let's get our cheese. So, this is a shredded cheese that I did. I have about a cup of yellow cheddar and a cup of white cheddar and about a quarter to a half cup of Asiago. Um, any kind of cheese blend that you like will work fine on top of here. I happen to like these three together. I really think the Asiago just brings a little special touch to it. Um, so, but do whatever you like to do, of course. Now we're gonna sprinkle this on top here. And get it as close over to the edge as you can. And it just needs to be like a little thin layer, that's fine. Try to get some of this, this uh, yellow cheddar mixed in here. Wow. I don't know about you, but I love cheese. I love anything topped with cheese. All right, I think I've got it all the way around. And now we're gonna set the air fry to 375. We're gonna do air crisp. Take that down to 375, whoops. The time, 20 minutes. It's probably not gonna take that long. I'll keep checking on it. Um, all we wanna see is that the cheese melts and then starts to get brown and bubbly on top. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. Oh, I can just smell that cheese and all these wonderful flavors. It's just so spectacular. Thanks, Joe, so much for suggesting this recipe. It is a real winner. And now, ordinarily, I would let this settle down and kind of cool, but I can't wait. So I'm gonna dig right in. This is just glorious. All that melty cheese and the beautiful carrots and the peas. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. I mean, this is like perfect. This is like what you would get in a restaurant. Let's take a bite. That roasted garlic is just coming through in such a subtle way. Roasted garlic is a lot milder than minced garlic. And so it just adds this like sweetness but this delicious flavor. Mm, mashed potatoes are perfect. Carrots and peas and corn all have a good texture. You can really get the beef flavor. Mm, definitely a winner. Let me get that one little piece of cheese and I've oh, got a piece of garlic there. Mmm. Absolutely perfect. Now, don't go anywhere because we have a video coming up that is the perfect dessert to accompany this shepherd's pie. Cottage pie. We make cottage pie. I've got to remember that myself. So stay tuned and check out that video. It's going to come up right over there. And make sure to hit the subscribe button, which will be 
right up there if you haven't already. If you've already subscribed to The Salted Pepper, I wanna thank you so much. I have been getting numerous messages and comments on all the videos and they are so encouraging and I read every one of them and try to reply. I really appreciate your support so much. Thank you and have a wonderful day.